So today I'm gonna to be going over big O notation. Um, if you're new to computer science or you're just get, you're interested in programming or you're a student, software engineering student or whatever, um, eventually you'll come across this concept of big O notation. And so today I want to hopefully easily explain uh, what big O notation is, why it's important for us as programmers and um, how we can evaluate big O, big o notation of a set of code. So what is big O complexity? Big O complexity is the worst case complexity of a given set of code. Um, we, we basically want to determine, uh, you know, what is the, what is the longest amount of time that this code is going to take to complete running? Um, why, why do we want to know the worst time? Um, because this is going to be, it's basically because it can only go up from there. So if we have, if we always look at the best case solution, we're not going to have a realistic look at, um, how, how long the code's really going to take in, in every situation. We want to look at every worst case scenario and try to trim the fat as we go, as we uh, try to optimize, um, our solutions. So we don't want to just be blinded and assume, oh, okay, well, you know, best case, this runs in two milliseconds when in reality, you know, most of the time or in the worst case, it's going to run 12 hours, which is just unrealistic for a program to run. So what is big O notation? Big O notation is a way to describe the rate in which the number of computations will increase for a set of code. So there's a nice little graph that I got from Google over here. Um, you'll see different... Uh, these are these are how you would write big O notations with a big O, some parentheses, and and uh, usually the letter N to describe a collection set. So that's what you're seeing when you see the letter N. It's a collection set, an array, a linked list, just any kind of data structure that holds a number of elements um, that we might be iterating over. Let's take for example um, this linear time what's going this big O of N, this means linear time. So this, just based on this graph, just looking at it, you can tell it's linear. As data input or N, the size of N increases, the um, amount of time for the code to finish will increase uh, along with it. Um, with O N squared or any other exponent, you'll see that as data input increase, the amount of time will exponentially increase with that. For logarithmic, we'll see that as data input increases, the amount of time for it to complete will flatten out. And for constant, no matter what the input is, it's going to always be the same. So these are just kind of graphical representations. But the real, the one thing I really want to drive home here is that big O notation is not a way to describe how fast a set of code is going to run, or the worst case of how a set of code is going to run. It's a way to describe the rate in which the code is going to run um, as a given set of a given collection set increases if that makes more sense um, you can absolutely have a situation where constant time runs slower than an algorithm that runs in o n cube time that is completely possible but of as n the size of n increases eventually it'll get to a point where o n cubed will take an exponentially more amount of time than constant than the constant time algorithm would so it all depends on the size of n so let's go to our big o complexity calculator do, do, do. where'd it go there it is so the big o notation calculator this is a nice little tool that i made um you know that I think you guys could really could be very helpful for those that are trying to learn more about big O notation. Um, the, it basically takes in your code as input and then gives you the big O result of that set of code and also kind of breaks down the um, each like set of code and its complexity and explains why the final result is what it is. So let's uh, let's take a simple example. Um, Let's, let's take a real world example of, of how we would calculate big O. So let's say we have a for loop. And let's say we have some collection n. And we want to iterate over every element in collection n. OK. So what is the time complexity going to be, or the big O notation going to be, for this for loop? 
we'd have a linear time. Why is it linear time? Well, we are iterating over every single element in n. So let's say n is equal to one. That means we will run this for loop one time. Or you can think of that as one computation. Um, let's say n is a billion. <laughs> then it'll take a billion computations to complete. So as n increases, the number of computations will increase. So notice this is, this is about it being a rate. It's not that, um, you know, if n is equal to one, it's gonna run very fast, but if it's n is equal to a billion, it's gonna run very slow. So let's say, um, you know, on the counter, let's look at a constant loop. I guess I already told you the answer to this. But if we iterate over a constant number like 10,000, I'm just going to say. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, if we take a constant number like 10,000, what is the time comp complexity going to be for this? It's going to be constant time. Why is it going to be constant time? Because um, this number never changes. This is not a variable. It's going to be the same. It's going to take the same amount of time, no matter how many times you run the code. It's doing ten thousand computations. Again, it, it might be that you know you have another for loop down here. Oh boy. It might be I have another for loop down here with size with the, we're iterating over collection n. This might take less time than this. Even though we've said this is linear time and this is constant time, this might take less time because n might be one element or it might be two elements. It's a lot smaller than 10,000. But, you know, we don't know what the size of n is. If the size of n turns out to be a billion, then it's going to be like 100 times <laughs> slower than this now. So now let's say your code base has a f two for loops adjacent to one another. You have a constant time for loop and a linear time for loop. What's going to be the big old complexity of this set of code? It's going to be linear time. The reason why it's linear time is because we are going to take the, whenever we're evaluating big O complexity, we are taking the worst case um, scenario every time. So if we look at this code analysis breakdown, we see that this for loop is producing a constant time because the number of computations will always be the same. And this for loop is producing a linear time because we don't, we're iterating over a variable set of numbers. Now, let's say that, what's an example of an ex exponential increase? So if we have, let's say, a nested for loop where we iterate over, um, over n twice, so basically, it's what it's doing is for every element n, we're, at, we're iterating over n entirely again. So let's say n is, t n is equal to 10, or 10 elements. Then that means that for each element, we have to iterate 10, to 10 more times. So basically, this is running 100 times, 10 times 10. What's another way you can explain, uh, describe 10 times 10, 10 squared? So this would be an exponent of two, um, you know, where, where n is some variable. And, uh, you know, notice we still have our constant time here, but because um, O n squared is our worst case complexity, that's going to be the final result of our whole set of code. Um, also notice, you know, if we have two in this code analysis breakdown, we have level one, level two, the level is describes where in the nested um, for loop this for loop exists essentially. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see that it breaks down like, oh, this, this for loop is linear, this for loop is linear. So basically you have O n times O n, which is producing that O n squared. And you can do this as many times as you want. Um, you know, this, what would this be? O n cubed. Let's do another nested the for loop. This is gonna be n, f n to the fourth. You know, the more nested you get, the more complex it becomes. Now, what's a, what about another example? Um, how about if we had two for loops, but they're adjacent to one another? 
what would be the time complexity of this? Well, we're running two ends. It's safe to say that we could run it as, we could call it O of N plus N. The result's gonna be O of N. The reason why is because we don't consider coefficients when we're, when we're evaluating big O notation. So another way of writing O N plus N would be O, N, or o of two N since we don't consider the coefficients, we can just describe this as O of N. The two is not gonna make any difference. It's not gonna be, it's not a multiple. That's why it's insignificant to us. So what's an example of a logarithmic expression? So let's say that instead of iterating or instead of incrementing I, we multiply it by two with every iteration. This is going to produce an error because we are uh, setting i equal to zero here. Um, so I really want to set it to one. So it's not getting zero, 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 zero every single time. Um, so we set it to one. What's going to be the, the time complexity of this? It's going to be logarithmic. So why, why is it logarithmic? We, let, let's say that the size of n is one million elements. Um, and, and we have i that's iterating over those million elements. If we're multiplying i by 2 every time, eventually there's going to be a point where i is equal to 500,000, right? And then the next iteration, i will be equal to 1 million. So we skipped 500,000 elements along the way. The idea is by changing the incrementation, by multiplying i by itself by 2 every single iteration, we're going to be visiting only a fraction of the elements in the entire um, given set. And even as n gets bigger, um, we're still we're, that that fraction is going to get smaller and smaller, and that's why you see the time complexity level out in that graph I was showing earlier. Um, so that's pretty much every example. Um, if you have any comments of what I could do to improve this big O notation calculator, please visit it, check it out, try it, break it do whatever you need to and um you know feel free to give me some comments or feedback on it. i'd love to improve it some more so i could help out um you know new developers that are looking to use this and, and really enhance their knowledge on big o so let's uh let's get back to the powerpoint because i wanted to just talk about one more thing uh, i might have screwed it up here it's fine so <clears throat> final notes again um we drop coefficients when we're determining big O. Another thing to consider is the case where you have two different collection sets. Let's say you have collection set N and collection set M. Um, let's say you have a nested for loop where you're iterating over N and inside that for loop, you're iterating over M. You would describe this as big O of N times M. Um, it wouldn't be described as N squared because these are two different collection sets, if that makes any sense. Um, so that's another thing to consider is if you're, if you have different collection sets, you want to, you want to, um, describe that in your big O notation. Um, and also just finally remember big O complexity is the worst complexity in a given set of code always. So if, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just always the worst complexity. Um, there's other kinds of notations. There's. Uh, omega, um, there's theta. Theta, I believe, is the average case complexity, and omega is the best case complexity. Big O is primarily the most important because, like I said earlier, you can think of it as it can only go up from there. So if you can really optimize the worst case complexity of that code, then you know that your code is going to be efficient throughout. So I hope this was helpful. Um, please feel free to leave a comment um, and uh, let me know if there's any other topics that you guys would or tools that I can make that could help you guys out. So have a good one.